to Triple Fist Bump, the premier gaming podcast where you can listen to opinions across generations. I'm the Kid Dream, joined by my two co-hosts, Chris, Chris, and Osiris. Oh, 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 Osiris. Oh, 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 Osiris. Oh, 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 Osiris. Yeah. Hmm? Thank you. <laughs> now, who's excited to about who who loves big robots? Me. That's, that's your transition. Yeah, that, that's like that's the best uh, I got. But the title of the game was a good transition, though. I mean, Do but we, you know what you're gonna do with those big point. robots. You're gonna use those big robots to go into, into that breach. <laughs> just had to change it. I mean, yeah. I mean, in look, I'm I'm glad you could do the into the breach one because you kind of messed up the Metopia one. Utopia itself was a good enough transition to Metopia. Dang, we're still holding grudges about the Metopia transition. Yeah, it was yeah. still cool. I mean, it worked out in the end. It's not like it. I mean, we got there. I mean, we did, but still. <laughs> All right. So, Besides, uh, into the breach. What is that? Into the are breach. Going into, are you going into the earth and fighting alien monsters in when, mechs? When everything died in the earth? Well, at one point, yes. But mostly it's them coming out of the earth to destroy you. Are they Wait, what? That they're coming out of the earth? That's kind of, of the, just gotta say that. <laughs> no, see, that's that's the mystery, right? So why are there they're aliens not only aliens coming out if they're the coming earth? from the earth? Hey, look, there was an old game called XCOM where the aliens actually did come from the ocean at one point. That's the exact opposite of the definition of an alien, though. Yeah, well, technically, they, like, showed up thousands of years ago or something and then built the society on the ground and then came up to take over. It was really weird. I mean, those games aren't about their story anyway. They're about shooting aliens. And so is this. (laughs) So, Into the Breach is a turn-based, tactical, time-traveling, mech-focused adventure. Okay, Where, that's very weird. Oh, I didn't think it would be turn based though. Yeah, I didn't think it would be oh, turn based either. Oh yeah, no, it's totally turn totally based. In fact, my playing of this game was inspired by the announcement of Advance Wars, in that <laughs> those the only thing that these games have in common is that they are turn based tactics games. You were like, I can't and wait for Advance Wars, so I'm gonna just get this into the breach. I'm saying give give it a shot. When is Advance Wars coming out? Because I want it so bad. Yeah, it's, it's December like October this year. Wait, is it they, they moved out? I thought it was December. Well, it's Metroid October. Dread is October. I oh. figured everything was around then. No, actually, Metroid Dread was September, I think. It was fall. Everything everything was September. Look, the the Warriors got a September. Lot of games. Metroid it was September. Also, who else is hyped to be killed by an enemy randomly? I want those enemies to be so hard to avoid. I mean, they're probably actually be you get the you can counter it. But I looked on the I looked on the um the articles and it literally they said in it you literally have one frame to counter it. It doesn't matter. It's one frame. That- if you're cornered and you counter it, you'll still be cornered. No, you have, you dash under it once you counter it, so you can get away. There's one frame to do it though. That's kind of funny. It was like so they were just like you have one frame to counter it. As soon as the Emmy blinks, so best just avoid this situation altogether. <laughs> I did parries and third strike. I can counter stuff. I never expected it's Metroid fun. to be a run one frame uh, game. Where you have to hit perfect yeah, that frames game is about on collect energy tanks because you can't avoid taking damage. You ready to see the speedrunners just running through Emmys? You're gonna do it. I want you. I don't. 
I know I want them to just be invincible, but I want you to just be able to kick an enemy in the face out the way. Okay, but we just in, oh, into the breach. Back, back to the breach. <laughs> back into the breach. We don't know what this back game is. Back into the breach. What is what is a typical right. gameplay loop look like? What are we doing? Okay, so this is the basic setup. The game actually, thankfully, kind of just throws you right into it. Throws you into uh, the without, Oh, yeah, you're in there. The As you press the start button, the game asks you to select your pilot. You can name them if you want, or they come with a name. Mm-hmm. And as soon as that... Is the name randomly first, generated, or, they, or do they each uh, have yeah, different they, names? They seem to be somewhat randomly generated <laughs> Joe. but the portraits are not because mm. each of the pilots have special abilities mm. that I'll get into later um, but you start off as a scene where there's just one mech looking out at the world and the world is destroyed Okay, and everyone's dead <laughs> everyone's gone all right. And the mech is just standing there by himself with the pilot. And he's just like Wait, the mech the mech is like an entity? Well the well the mechs stuff? have AI, but ah. they but there are human pilots inside of them. Well mostly human. There's also a cyborg pilot too. <laughs> okay, that's the, the, the human well, yeah, well you know, he's half. Isn't man, he half basically mech. a mech then? Is he's just basically a mech then, isn't he? Yeah, he's a mech pilot piloting in a mech. What if you? Never he mind. has awesome bonuses, but that pilot looks out of the world. He's just like, "Yeah, this timeline is screwed. Everyone's we're lost. All right, we get, it's time to go back to a new timeline, and Wait, you travel what? back in time. Yep. He's like, "This timeline is we lost. <laughs> the kaiju won. We lost. Time to go back in time." This is the worst timeline. Oh, yeah. And so you travel back in time to the start of the game Mm -hmm. in a different timeline. And you discover that the world is being set upon by these kaiju, which are, you know... Why are kaiju kaiju. everywhere? It's uh, ever since Godzilla, probably even before Godzilla, actually, kaiju have just been a thing. They're just giant monsters. They could be both from outer space and from the Earth at the same time. Just whatever. Like, Godzilla's technically a kaiju, but he's from the Earth. Whereas, like, you know, Rodan is from outer space. It's like a Japanese monster. Yeah, basically. This is a Japanese giant monster. But the U.S. has adopted the kaiju aesthetic as well. And even the name didn't even bother translating. Wait, this is a so, U.S. Yeah. This is a U.S. based game, but it was or a Western game, but they called the monsters kaiju. Uh, actually, I need to look at the. I'm pretty sure it's Western developed though. Mm. Let me see. But they yet, but they do call them kaiju. Yeah, but that's because they are literally kaiju. They are literally giant bug monsters <laughs> that are coming out of the ground. They're like it is. They are the most straightforward kaiju that you can have in a game. And you're fighting them with mechs, which is generally what you do with kaiju. Right. Is that you fight them with mechs. So, you know, I mean, they're being true to life. (laughs) They're being true to life, true to form. So, uh, let's see. Subset Games, I think this is a U.S. studio. Does this mean, does this mean whales or kaijus? No, they're just big mammals. They just big. They just big mammals. They just big. I'm pretty sure anyone who's never seen a whale before would be pretty convinced it was a monster. Oh, they called off. You look at the the literature. Oh, man. Oh, they thought. I mean, that's the whole point of Moby Dick is that they thought it was a monster. (laughs) Captain Ahab went nuts. And, uh, you know, it's. I mean, hey, look, if, if Captain Ahab had access to a mech. You don't think you would have took that Mac after Moby Dick? I think I haven't been playing the Lion for a while. I'm gonna get back on there and see what I can do. Read Moby Dick. That guy from the logging had access to a mech. Well, he still have to wait. He still have to wait. Days, but... It wouldn't change anything. 
But man, it'd be cool though. He'd be, he'd be waiting in a mech. What if he just like? What if he took those four hundred days to make a time machine, and then he was like, "Oh, the time machine kind of pointless <laughs> now. It's four hundred days." The biggest fail. Then he goes back in time four hundred days so he can use the time machine to skip back to the present. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Problem solved. That's, you just made that, it worse that's somehow. What I want. Ah, uh, nope, nope. This ingenuity. But yes, you this gotta fight how... these kaiju. You gotta fight giant bug kaiju who are attempting to kill everyone. Okay. Literally. Kill everyone. I wanted to so see a set... moth. Are we just fighting moths? Oh, you find all types of stuff. It's like giant moths, like rhino beetle looking things. You got... I'm like ants and. Is that a energetic rhino beetle? Yeah, but it's like a rhino so. beetle. If the rhino beetle was the size of the Sears Tower, <laughs> you know, like that, that's oh. we're talking about that type of big, big rhino beetle. Big. So, the interesting thing about interest into the breach as a tactics game is that in many tactics games, you're either in a fire emblem situation where you have a team full of units mm-hmm. that you're raising and leveling up and you know bringing into battle, maybe like you know anywhere between ten to fifteen in the battle, you know, right. so to speak. Or you have a game like Advanced Wars where you are picking a CEO who leads troops, and then you a lot of times can build those troops on the map based off the Wait, resources. Wait, both of those? Into the breach is kind of a. It's a little bit Fire Emblem with Max. Basically, but you kind of take you, but you you control those mechs a lot more like Advanced Wars than you would a fire. I said Cynthia jumps in the mech. Oh yeah, she'd be broke. She solved it all. Zero builds a dragon mech. <laughs> yeah, he's like Lady Ray. He's just shooting laser bolt, laser beams. <sighs> I'm just imagining I mean, like Smash Bros. That King Cable cool. thing. Free Lady Ray and a giant laser beam <laughs> <laughs> just blows up everything. Charging up the energy of the sun into a giant kaiju destroying bomb. Well, yes, you know, it's, it's apt that he would say for Lady Ray here. Because, yes, in Into the Breach, you're not just you, you know, protecting your units. Or mm-hmm. fighting, and into the breach, you're actually in a constant defensive mission. Oh, is it an escort it, mission the whole game? It is not an escort mission. Oh. The thing about the kaiju is that they can appear anywhere. They come from underground. Mm-hmm. All right. Fair enough. So in the middle of an attack and get attacked. Yeah, absolutely. And. You're very limited because humanity doesn't have a lot of resources to field an army of mechs. So you only get three. (laughs) And into the bridge, you only have three units. That's the whole game? You only have three units? You only have three. Now, over time, you will unlock more and more mechs Mm -hmm. that you can mix and match your team with. But you only have three units. Yep. On and each of those units each you only get three on the battlefield and each each run through of the game, those are the three that you have. <laughs> That's it. Dang. But they are also very, very different from one another. Right, I imagine. Yeah. So you will have one mech that is entirely close quarters combat. Mm-hmm. This mech punches Voltron. Eh, well, Voltron, I mean, defender of the universe. Yeah, but but he's not like combining. He's just he's just punching naturally. But Voltron just hit people. Yeah, yeah, Voltron punch, but you know, I, I don't just think it's five lions coming together. To, you know, it all <laughs> form the head. You know, I don't think. <laughs> no, it's just it's he's the just head. he's just punching. He's just punching, but he's really good at punching. Mm-hmm. You have another mech that is a tank. It's like the gun tank from Gundam. Okay. Uh, he just shoots. He can shoot at any range, but he just shoots. And then you have one that teleports. Eventually, yes. 
<laughs> but in the beginning of the game, you have an artillery bot that can lob artillery. These are the three types of mechs that you have. And the kaiju you run against have all types of abilities where they can wrap you in silk to stop you from moving. Dang. They can shoot shots That's... that pierce your units and hit units behind you. It's rare, like rush across more... the map. it's rare that enemies have more moves than you, like more options. More moves to I start. like I like it when damn enemies have more options because it feels like, like, oh, this enemy was super smart and had good AI. I'm going to just use a potion. Oh, yeah. It's, huh. Good luck using a potion. There's only one way to heal and eat into the breach. And it requires a Killing repair conscious. button. No, you can repair, but it just costs your turn. Which, once yeah. I bring up this next point... Does it repair all mechs or just one? Just one mech and only just one HP of that mech. <laughs> one what? HP. They must not have one much HP. HP. Mechs have... Your starting mech, the tough mech, has three HP. Mm. Okay. You will encounter Kaiju who can deal five damage. <laughs> Wait, what? The beginning? Yep. If it, well, in and the they second, just kill you? Yeah. And if your mech dies, the pilot dies. Permanently. Yeah. Like fire. Oh, I was just about to ask. Yep. Permadeath. Yeah, I was just about to ask if this was a permadeath game. It is a now in the game. in the next map you can use that mech again. It'll just be reduced to his AI, and while the AI mechs can fight, they don't have any buffs or bonuses that will come from pilots, right? Like I mean, extra health or extra movement range or extra power. So you get more mechs throughout the game, but not more pilots. You do get more pilots as well. Mm. There's a thing that happens in maps called time capsules that will come through. But before I get to that, let me just sum up the base. Like, you want to know the basic loop of a battle in Into the Breach. Right, we keep getting distracted. So, yeah. So you have three mechs. They are very specialized. Each of your mechs have abilities. They're very specialized. Typically, in most fights in Into the Breach, you have a countdown to victory. So it's five turns is generally what it is. You survive for five turns. That is that hard to just survive five turns? Yes, it yeah. is. That is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, so you have five turns to survive. Typically, you'll be there'll be two to three kaiju at the start, and every turn after that, more kaiju will come from underground. So it's not easy to kill a kaiju either. Not necessarily, so especially in the beginning. In the beginning of the game, it, it so can't just fire and it's just fire rumble ambushes every turn. <laughs> every turn. Not same turn reinforcements. Yeah. But you do know when they're coming, and, and you know where they're coming from. Right. Which so you okay. don't have the in fire emblem, so. And and that's is that is a very critical detail too that you have information and this game gives you a lot of information on what your units and what your enemies can be. Yeah. But it's not just See, what makes it tricky is that you'll think, well, okay, I just have to survive. That's tough. But, you know, as long as I play cautious, I play cool, I can, you know, you can kind of find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is that in Into the Breach, you're not just protecting yourself. You're protecting humanity. <laughs> Remember what I said about the beginning of the game where the lone mech was looking at all the destroyed Earth? Right. Yeah. You've gone back in time to stop that from happening. So on every map of Into the Breach, there are cities, there are laboratories, there are installations for humanity. Mm. And the kaiju will either attack you or they'll attack these installations. Oh. They'll go to a building and attempt to destroy it and kill everyone in that building. <laughs> they'll do it. The point Dang. of your mechs is to stop the, that from happening. Right. And By so any means necessary. Every map, you have to be staying alive, but also trying to protect everybody else. <laughs> yep. They're keeping the other people alive. And the only way to get more resources to either upgrade your mechs 
or buy other items is through protecting humanity. In fact, this is so critical to the game that at, in the top corner of your screen, in every map, there is a number. Mm -hmm. And that number is the number of civilians alive in that map. <laughs> And when your and when installations and buildings take damage, that number drops. That's oh that's god, right yeah. Wait, so, wait, so like a kaiju shoots a fire, all the building is like, oh, you just lost two thousand people. <laughs> right. Look, yep. yeah, you people are up. dead. Twenty people died. That's pretty people messed up. People are dead. Yeah, that's, and it's super odd too because when you start a match, your mechs kind of drop into battle from the air. Mm -hmm. And so and you'll see these little voice blurbs come out of all the cities and buildings like it's the time it's the time rifters or something. They're coming to save us. The the VEC are going to get it. Those are the kaiju. They call them the VEC. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to get it. Like we're saved. And sometimes you'll see a little kid voice is like, Dad, look, it's the VEC. <laughs> oh, God. And so when that building gets targeted by a, a, a kaiju, a VEC, you're like, well, oh, no, I know there's a kid there. Oh, he, he told his dad he was happy to see the mechs. I have to save him. <laughs> right. He believed in you. So you end up feeling bad. Yes. That's the it's Wait, a surprising how much health do the kaiju? How much health do the kaijus have? Do the, the, the kaiju can have anywhere. I've seen kaiju start from as low as two health to all the way as high as like eight. Hmm. And most attacks, yeah. most of your attacks are doing between one or two damage. Yeah, those two damage is going to sound critical. Yes. So you have to really be careful. And then there are also VEC uh, or Kaiju that can buff their other Kaiju. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. In terms of giving them like HP boosts or defense oh, no. boosts or the ability to expand when they die and deal damage <laughs> around them. Wait, so if they're by a building, then you can't kill them. Uh-huh. You can't kill them because if you kill him, he's going to explode and destroy the building. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> that leads to the next part of this game, which is how do you combat an enemy that one, there are way more of them than there are of you, and they're going after sensitive targets that cannot fight back, especially when they have abilities like that. Well, Into the Breach, what sets a, another thing that sets it apart is that in this game, not only do you have access to perfect information in terms of what your opponents are going to do, mm -hmm. but all of your attacks have physics attached to them that go beyond just dealing damage. So you can move. So, for instance, exactly. Your right. mech, when he punches somebody, he doesn't just damage them. He moves their position. Mm. He shifts them. The shot from your gun tank mech can shift positions too. And so, as can your mortar. And so, depending on how you use it. If you, um, shoot someone who's like in the path of another one will it interrupt their movement well all actions will what happens be... if you shoot a mon what happens, if, what happens if you shoot a kaiju into a city does it just bolt oh it, you killed the, you killed the people in that city <laughs> oh you shoot wait, a kaiju I, 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 and knock him into a building oh, think of it like a giant robot movie if a giant robot punches a monster into a building that build is still messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Those so people all the are people still just there. die? Yes. Or, may, or many of them. There may be some survivors. Okay, I'm like, please tell me it doesn't kill all of them in there. Yeah. You'll kill enough. <laughs> I mean, they'll even say, like, sending, dispatching rescue teams when a, build, when a building gets blown up. I don't know. Yeah, they'll, they'll send rescue teams, but it's, it's, you see the number of dead because it shows up and deducts from the total number of civilians. So you, you know who, how many people died. But yes, you have to shift people. So to answer your question, Chris, you can interrupt attacks, mm -hmm. uh, depending on certain situations. So 
For instance, there are desert maps where there are sand dunes. And right. If a kaiju is on a sand dune and you attack them while they're on the sand dune, it'll but it'll kick up dust, and that dust will cancel their attack because they can't see. Mm. And could you just knock them off the sand dune? Can you move? Like, you can would knock- that have any effect? Yeah, that's or would true. Just- well. Can you move a yes. kaiju into a kaiju's attack path and get them hit by, like, each other? Absolutely. And that is also a key point of the game. Because since you know that the kaiju, what they're going to do next, mm-hmm. and the kaiju always commit to their attacks unless they are interrupted. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so, I guess that's good, but it's kind of oh, yeah. funny. It's like, well, you know, bro, you bro, bro don't like, shoot. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. It's like, nah, I'm, I started it. Nah, I started it, man. <laughs> you gotta think of it like you know, you're charging your laser, and then they get punched last minute into the laser. Ooh, yeah. ooh. Ah, nah. Gone. <laughs> but you can definitely punch other kaiju. You into know, I'm the thinking attack. of all these. I'm thinking of all these like Godzilla monsters, and then I realize they're all bugs, and it's all of a sudden becoming less. Hey, the Godzilla. coolest Godzilla <laughs> monster is a bug, and that's Mothra. She's awesome, and she's mm-hmm. a bug. Never, never disrespect Mothra. I like moths. All right, cool. You like bugs, then? It's like kaiju. Yeah. Yeah, I like bugs. Yeah, cool. It just, it's, I was thinking of all these Godzilla monsters bumping into each other and fire breath and all this, and I was like, oh, wait, no, they're, they're all bugs. They're just bugs. They're all bugs. That's so far. <clears throat> That's really interesting, being able to move the um, enemies and stuff. I had never considered that for a tactical RPG. Well, I guess not RPG, but, you know, a tactical game. I mean, it does have some light RPG, because your pilots do level up and yeah. gain abilities as well uh, over the course of the uh, of, an, of a match. I just never imagined, like, moves naturally having physics and stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's a really neat thing because it totally changes the way you approach battles. Like, typically, like a lot of times you can play a fire emblem. What you're thinking about is, I need to kill this enemy. Yeah, how, how do I, do I kill, I kill them, them as well as possible? Exactly. But into the breach, there are many moments, often more often than not. How do I make them not kill these people? Exactly. And oftentimes the way to do that doesn't even involve dealing damage to them. Right. It's just about shifting their position. So you're just holding them off the whole fight, usually. You're typically holding them off. I mean, if you can kill them, kill them, because like that gives <laughs> right. your pilots experience. And there are often side objectives that, you know, if you kill a certain number of VEC, you get a bonus. Mm-hmm. But no, the the most important thing is about defending these cities and keeping your pilots alive. Right. And if you can just shift them around and keep them from being able to deal damage to properties, you're doing your job. But it, it, it definitely changes the way you think about approaching the fight, though. Like, like, there are times when I put myself in a situation where I only had one unit left to move, mm-hmm. and there was two VEC getting ready to attack two separate cities. I'm like, well, I can't stop both of them. And so I would think to myself, like, okay, what are my options? Uh, Can I knock them into each other? No. Because if you punch a VEC or shoot a VEC into another one, they'll take damage Mm -hmm. from each other like when they hit each other. Also, same thing goes for, like, knocking them into mountains. Say what? But will that bump the other VEC that it bumps into? Well, well, the VEC that you push will move into the VEC's other... If a, if you will punch a person and they're supposed to be pushed into another space, if an enemy or your one of your allies is occupying that space, they their positions won't shift. They'll just take extra damage. But if the space How is much clear... Damage? Well, typically it's just one damage, but there's ways to increase that. Right, like more than one damage in this game would be a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, this is, you got to think of this as a low number thing. You know, somewhat like Fire Emblem, where one point of strength means a lot versus right. like four strength in another RPG, and the damage barely goes up at all. I like it when you can do the math in your head. 
Oh, yeah. And, right. and this game is all about that. So it keeps it pretty simple, but in a good way. That right. you know, like, all right, this vet got two HP. I punch him into this other vet. He's going to die, and I can get extra damage on the vet I punch him into. Nice. But, yeah, in the example of these two vet trying to attack these two separate cities, I ended up having to place my mech in a dangerous uh, situation where I knew since I couldn't stop both of them because I only had one unit, I was going to have to commit my mech. Wait, so were the other two dead? For the... Well, they, they the had moved others... already for turn. Ah. Yeah, they had moved for turn. Because like, they had more important yeah, there, there was other attack uh, targets <laughs> that they were that they had neutralized. But it was just these last two guys left that can that could still attack buildings in their turn. And so I ended up being able to st- kill one of them by punching them into water. Because <laughs> water for the Vex, like a lot of sci-fi movies for some reason is a basically an insta kill they pretty much drown that is strange water is like yeah, the that source of life a, for uh, everything source of life for us is the source of death for them for them yes right i guess that's the point <laughs> yeah it's pretty simple but i'm you know it's still cool yeah i punched him with a mech into water and he drowned but when I did that, I positioned myself in such a way that my mech was blocking the path of the last vec. Uh, hero sacrifice. Exactly. And that's something you're going to have to put, uh, consider a lot is whose life is more important, the life of my pilot or the life of these people. Right. And so I put that mech right there and... Luckily, he survived because actually that that charge in Vec only did one damage. He had two <laughs> so yeah, he was a critical. One... Like his his camera was flashing and stuff, but you know he survived. But that one Got damage on a city would have been so much. Oh yeah, it would have destroyed the city. Each city can only take one hit. Wow. Wait, what? Yep. Well, you got to think of these mechs are hyper advanced and made to fight. These buildings are like a building in Chicago. If you can make mechs, why don't you just make better buildings? Well, the vet kind of came out of nowhere, and <laughs> it took humanity everything to just make these three mechs. I think, isn't, aren't you from a different timeline anyway? Yeah, and you're going back to, like, the start of the conflict, basically. So if they don't know how to make mechs yet, you just have them. Like, you basically bring back your, well, okay, let's get into that really quick. <laughs> You know, because I've got to answer your question and explain the core conceit of the game. This has not happened to me yet. Probably will very soon, but it hasn't happened yet. But in an event that you either, anytime you lose a city, there's a a resource called power. And as cities are destroyed, your power grid loses more and more power. Mm-hmm. And if you lose, if you reach zero power, it's game over. So if all of your pilots are, you know, killed and destroyed and you basically lose your ability to protect the planet, you lose. The power loses. Eight, like it's, Wait, so do, the, to, so do the Vex actually still use their turn to try and sto- destroy the cities even when your pilots are gone? Yeah. Well, because, you know, the AI will be controlled. Wait, so the there's pilots. actually... Oh, so the AI will love okay. it. Right. Then, like, so is it still possible for the banks to not destroy all the cities even when your pirates are going? Well, if your entire team is wiped out in one match, I do believe that's game over. Well, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Like, if all your mechs are killed in one match, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. Basically, if, if you get a game over and it's mostly as a result of just losing city after city after city, to the point where the power grid fails. Mm-hmm. And the power grid is consistent in between maps. So damage from one map will carry over to the next. Right. Wow. Yeah. Now you can buy power with resources to add power to the gauge. But of course, that's going to cost you resources for things like extra weapons for your mech and uh, upgrade reactor cores that allow you to upgrade your mech to do more things. 
Right. So you don't really want to have to buy them, but they're there, and you only can really get them at the end of each individual item. The game is separated to four core items with the final mission after. But back to it. When you lose, what happens is that that timeline, much like the beginning of the game, is lost. Mm -hmm. And you have to go back in time to start again. But considering if you have any pilots that survive, you get to choose one pilot to send back in time again. Mm. And that pilot will retain all their lumps and ex you know, experience. Mm. And so they can go back and save humanity, huh? Exactly. So the guy you used in the beginning of the game with the punch mech, he was the guy that survived the his timeline, which is why he went back. Right. But he but might not be the one that survives the next one. Exactly. Right. That's pretty cool. So there's no main good. There's no main character. There's no main that character. That is good. It's just the team. Yep. <laughs> Dang, you against it's main just characters? Well, that initial guy looks pretty boring, honestly. I'm kind of glad he is with the main character. Mm -hmm. He looks like generic, generic military man. Oh, no. Though I do like that he has great, he has great one-liners. <laughs> I think at one point he came to battle and he was like, sorry, Vec, the pool is closed. I'm like, <laughs> And then he immediately no punched sense. him back into the ocean and killed him. Like, he just punched him into the biggest pool, the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> what? The pool is clearly open. It's, I, look, it's all of these Oh, he punched him into crazy. the pool that was closed. He punched him into the pool that was closed so that he couldn't get out because it was closed. Yeah, I, I have to I'm try just like, this. The pool it sounds was interesting. interesting. No, it's, it's really, yeah. it's well, really fun. Yeah, I tried too. Yeah, it's really fun, so... Yeah, you can you can take those pilots back and send them and send them back to the start of the game. And every island okay. you unlock, you can immediately select. So as you play more of the game, you can kind of start with different mechs or mm -hmm. start at a different island. You know, each island has a unique situation that's going on with unique mechanics. Right. So the okay. first island for Is instance, there a pilot that just I bet there is. Is there a pilot that's just anime girl? I there... did get anime nerd girl. Dude, that's bad. Whose special ability was that she could create shields. Like her mech, her, her, any mech that she goes into automatically gets a shield that nullifies damage once. So you can put her into like a particularly vulnerable unit like the artillery. And you won't have to worry about her getting insta killed if she takes a bad attack. Right, because she has or one you extra can, health, basically, right? Basically, against any amount of damage, because it's just a damage nullifying shield. So there's no, there's no things that just like specifically counters someone's ability or affects ability. He said, "There's, oh, well, I mean, there's, there's definitely. I mean, every mech has a very different play style, and each of the vec also have kind of different tendencies." So that you can't end up in a situation where this mech is pretty much a hard counter to this type of strategy. But since the vec have so many different, no matter which mechs you choose, there's always going to be at least one tricky in it. Right. But if you can plan for it, and since you know every move the vec are going to take before they do it, you could you typically can get by on that. If you just take a step back and think, okay, I have three guys getting ready to attack cities, and then there's one guy that has my main punch mech wrapped up in silk. He can't move. If I shoot this artillery mortar in the middle of the group, I won't damage any of them because the damage only happens if you hit them directly with the artillery. But the shock wave of the artillery artillery will push all of these vec around. Right. And if I push the vec that has my punch mech wrapped in silk, the silk will be broken and that punch mech will be able to walk and move again. Mm. Or coincidentally, I could shoot an artillery at my own punch mech and use it to push him out of the silk right. to break him out that way too, giving him the ability to move and perhaps get in the way or do something. But yeah, no, the, but the summary is just, this game is a really fun game about positioning and movement. Mm-hmm. 
and it really kind of it kind of scratches that itch of just like both solving a puzzle but also having that fun that comes from getting a critical hit on a vac and drowning them in the ocean <laughs> right when you thought you was about to lose or having a pilot level up in a during a critical turn and they gain one extra move point that makes them able to run and intercept the shot that was going to destroy the mission, you know, critical piece of building right, right at the last moment. You're just like, oh, man, it's a game of tight strategy, great tactics and high marks. I recommend y'all. play. And that is all the time we got. Thank you for tuning in to Triple Fist Bump. And with that, Triple Fist Bump out.